Hey everybody, back in uh, February when uh, my maintenance foreman job was cut after 22 years and I had to go take a maintainer's job, have to take a maintainer's job, I could have bumped another maintenance foreman, but you want to go, I'll link that video in here and you go back and see my reasoning for not uh, doing that. But uh, anyway, in that video, I uh, questioned the sensibility of Union Pacific's 2020 plan. And uh, I didn't discuss it all that much, but I did say that I would uh, do a video about my thoughts on the 2020 plan. And I have finally had a few minutes to sit down and do that. Uh, this is November 1st. I retired October 1st. So it's been a month since I retired. and I'm just now getting around to it. Uh, I'm not here to dog the railroad. I'm really not. Uh, they're a big corporation. They have a lot of shareholders and the dividend is why people invest and investing makes the corporations work and allows them to invest more money into the company and pay a dividend. And uh, I'm a capitalist, I'm a red blooded American capitalist and I don't uh, begrudge anyone making another dollar. I really don't. Uh, that's gonna work with the 2020 plan. It's gonna make that work in the short term. It's gonna look really good. Dividend's gonna go up. Uh, the railroad will be able to invest a little bit more money in the company, but to do that, they are having to cut thousands of jobs. Uh, they have closed an F yard and they have closed the locomotive repair facility in Kansas City. And those are just a couple of them that have happened recently. Uh, they've closed a lot of other facilities. They've gotten rid of a lot of jobs. I don't even know how many, but it's in the thousands. Uh, I said in that video that uh, I didn't think the job cuts were over. I was right. They were nowhere near over. They're still nowhere near over. They're going to get rid of more jobs. Uh, one of the things they're talking about now is one man crews or two men. There are a conductor and an engineer on locomotives right now. And uh, they're going to just take that down. Their plan is to take that down to just an engineer. And I'm sure he'll be called an engineer conductor or something, whatever the heck they come up with. But uh, I don't think that's safe. I don't think that's uh, very smart. Uh, I I hope a lot of people in the public start seeing more videos like this and uh, learn about plans like this because I think it's safe. I think the public should get involved. Um, they're talking about uh, making trains well over two miles long now. They're starting to extend sidings around the system to accommodate these trains. Uh, they haven't just come out and blatantly said it. Now, well, I don't know. I'm not privy to the things that Union Pacific says anymore. I'm retired and I really don't care. But I know that they're extending sidings and there's only one reason for that and that's to accommodate longer trains. I know that they're trying to get the one-man crew pushed through the Federal Railroad Administration and if I, I saw a piece on that that and I don't know who wrote that piece. I don't know if it was a union thing or a company thing or just a thing saying that uh, they're on the verge of succeeding and getting that to happen. There are, that's half the jobs in the operating department, half the jobs in the field anyway. Uh, it's a lot of, that's a lot of people. And uh, the biggest expenditure in any business is their labor. You get rid of a job, uh, you don't have to pay that payroll anymore. You don't have to pay for their insurance. You don't have to, the railroad doesn't have to make a contribution to the, to the rail retirement board for the pension of the worker. Uh, if they had a vehicle, they don't have to pay for the gas. They don't have to pay for the truck. They don't have to pay for the insurance. It's a, it's a huge savings. It, I'm sure it makes a gigantic difference, but it will cost. Um, Southern Pacific back in the, uh, 90s did this. I spoke about a little bit about that in that video too, where uh, they brought in a guy and tried to get the budget working again, get things back on track, and he cut uh, the forces in the field. I don't, I don't remember how many jobs they lost, but hey, it made the numbers look really good. And then uh, that guy retired and they gave him his golden parachute because the numbers looked so good. And about two years later, they had to hire everybody back because they had slow orders. They couldn't keep trains running. The signal system's falling apart. And I know that railroading has come a long way since the 1990s, a long way, especially in the signal department. And uh, 
they cut a lot of signal jobs as the, as the technology uh, progressed in the signal department. And we don't need as many people as we used to, but we need all the people we have now. And especially in maintenance, uh, construction, uh, you have the people you need. If you have a lot of construction projects going on, you've got the budget to keep those people working fine. But when those projects start drying up and they don't need to put crossings in and they don't need to do this, and they don't need to do that anymore, they get rid of those jobs too. And uh, there are a lot of people who uh, made a big sacrifice to go to work for Union Pacific Railroad over the last few years. And... Uh, pull up stakes from wherever they were and move to wherever they went. In some cases, uh, good places where there, are still out, where there are employment opportunities, but in a lot of cases, I'm sure they're not. There are places out in the middle of who knows where, Kansas or New Mexico, places like that, where there just aren't a lot of job opportunities. Um, that's sad. That sucks. Again, it's, it, I don't think this is a long-term solution. Things may not... Uh, fall apart as quickly as they did at Southern Pacific, but uh, they will fall apart if they start getting rid of uh, all these jobs. There's not gonna be people to maintain this. Right now, the signal department is really, and around here anyway, is, is at its bare minimum. It, it would be really hard to get rid of jobs, but I think that's the next step. Uh, get rid of maintainers. I said that in the other video too. I think that the next step was getting rid of maintainers and extending their districts. Uh, that sounds like a good idea to those up there putting these plans in place, but it's a really, really bad idea down here. Uh, signal maintainers have a lot of work to do. They have to follow the track department. They have uh, trouble calls where they have broken gates or chasing signal problems during the day or they worked all night and they're not gonna be able to, and they go on the uh, hours of service law, they're not going to be able to work the next day, so the testing is going to get behind. That's going to affect uh, the railroad's issues. They'll have issues with the Federal Railroad Administration. Uh, it, I, it's just not a good idea. Uh, one of the things I was wrong about in that video was that they were. I thought they'd cut more management jobs. They didn't. They didn't cut management jobs. I don't know if they created any more management jobs, but they created another level of management. And some of the managers went out of the uh, manager's level to their called senior managers or something. This took place after I was retired, so I don't remember what exactly whatever it's called and it's going on what I hear. But uh, I don't know if they won't backfill those managers' jobs and they won't extend managers to, uh, to uh, compensate for that or if they'll hire what they call EAs, which are uh, people who aren't railroad people. They just hire people out of college, people with degrees and put them to work on the railroad to be uh, managers. And they don't necessarily need to know anything about the railroad. All they want them to do is uh, run their budgets and make sure the numbers look good. And that's a really, really, really bad idea. It's a terrible idea. Uh, if you are a manager, you need to know how things work with the people of whom you're in charge. Uh, you need to know how the signal system works if you're a signal manager. If you're a track manager, you need to know how the maintenance of way works. And uh, I don't know. Uh, they've hired some EAs that ended up being pretty good signal guys. And again, signals all I can speak to. And they've hired some that were absolute disasters. And they tried to cover their mistakes and make excuses and do this and that. And uh, I don't know. Bad idea, as far as I'm concerned. But they don't pay those guys as much as they pay experienced managers. And uh, a lot of those EA guys come here, they work for a couple of years, get a little management with a major corporation under their belt, and then they quit and uh, take that experience somewhere else and make more money. But anyway, I don't think the 2020 plan is a good long-term proposition for this or any other railroad. I know the other ones don't call theirs the 2020 plan. Whatever they call theirs, they're all getting involved in what they call precision railroading. And uh, it's costing a lot of jobs. And the signal systems have come a long way, like I said. But we're, we're at the bare minimum now in maintenance for sure. I don't think the 2020 plan is a good plan. I think it's a terrible plan. Uh, I think there are probably other ways that they could have increased the dividend without taking such a draconian action. Uh, but that's just me. I'm just a signal guy. Uh, 
I was offered management jobs, as I said in one of my other videos, that I never took because I just didn't want to be there. I didn't want to be that. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to, I liked being a signalman. I didn't want to get involved in being a manager. When you become a manager, I'm sure it's this way for any major corporation, but when you get up into management, um, you marry the company. Uh, they're not that concerned about your personal life. I know managers who've had their vacations canceled after they've already had uh, reservations and paid for things, and they just told them, hey, you're just going to have to figure out something else. And I don't know, maybe the railroad compensated them for that. Maybe they didn't. But uh, it's... Uh, those are jobs that you have wed yourself to that company. You have decided to forsake your family to an extent to uh, be a boss, make a little more money and get a better pension. And uh, I suppose if it, I mean, if it works out for you, I know some people in management that are good people and they're good. They're strong family people. I'm not saying it tears everybody up or ruins everybody or everyone allows it to ruin them. But uh, it does happen. Uh, and I think the higher up you go, the uh, more committed you are to the railroad. But anyway, that's beside the point. The 2020 plan, uh, when I was still working, I used to keep track of it and watch the car loadings and the differences in, uh, in some of the things that they they'd had graphs on, on the company homepage that uh, you could click on and open the stuff up and look at it. And I looked back over, uh, I don't know, five or six years, I think it was, prior to the 2020 plan, I went back and looked at stuff that, uh, you know, information that was available on the internet that didn't have anything to do with the railroad itself. They were just numbers, uh, economic numbers. And the car loadings were actually, they've remained pretty steady over the years. They haven't really picked up all that much since the 2020 plan has been implemented. It's not 2020. I don't know what they're going to do in 2020. Maybe they have some big October surprise or something that they're going to do. I, I don't know. It really doesn't matter to me anymore. I just feel for the people that are still there, uh, whose jobs keep getting more difficult, have they keep having more and more things piled on top of them. And for the people who are being furloughed, uh, I really feel for them. I was laid off for three years and it sucked so anyway so that's my two cents on the 2020 plan uh let me know what you think uh, maybe i'm all wet but i don't think a lot of people are going to disagree with me on this uh, if you're uh in management with union pacific i'd like to hear from you too uh see what you think about all this uh we'll see but anyway uh really all I have. Uh, I don't want to make this a 30 minute video, so I'm going to stop here. And uh, as usual, like, share, and subscribe. And let me know what you think. And I'll talk to you all later.